My name is Pat Perry, and we're at Hashimoto Contemporaries in Los Angeles. What's the name of the show? The name of the show is Witch World. And why is it called that? Part of the fun of making art and making all these paintings was trying to uh, use your powers of discernment to think about which things you want to pay attention to. And I think depending on uh, what parts of the super complex world you choose to pay attention to, you get a totally different version of it. So I wanted it to kind of be like a question. And also it sounds like witch, like Halloween, like spooky, and uh, there's a lot of spooky magic in the world. So. Tell me about where you're from. I live in Detroit. I've lived there for about 10 years, but I'm from Michigan too. Detroit is a complicated place to live. You know, it's uh, pretty emptied out. You know, it's, it's been depopulated by about half, um, but there's still half of people left. Yeah, we live in a house uh, in a field. All the houses around it were demolished, so it's kind of like living in a little island. The half of the block is just prairie pretty much around the house. So. Yeah, it's kind of like living in a farm in the middle of the city. Okay, so how did these come together? Uh, the stained glass are also still lives based on things appropriated from Craigslist. We wanted to just see when you take uh, those photos and you put them into a different medium what that image turns into and what it means. And when I say we, it's because uh, I worked with Rosemary Brown to make the stained glass, who is also my wife, and she also makes stained glass. Is there any symbolism behind stained glass? Or just something she's Yeah, I mean, done? in the same way like a painting, uh, elevates its subject matter and turns it into this historical thing or something that feels more timeless. Stained glass is like that too, you know? So it's like kind of matching up something super old with something totally newer that you probably wouldn't see a stained glass often. And I think that was kind of a theme for the show too. You know, all of these pictures are trying to show that uh, we're kind of reliving history. It's like a, a, yeah, a new version of an old story. Okay, so tell me about these firework paintings. Uh, the firework paintings are all based on found screenshots from YouTube home videos of people launching off fireworks, which also was just this other weird corner of the internet where you can find kind of this human piece of people's real lives. They're all different scenes from that. Uh, there was a lot of weird things. I think actually this one in particular was one where there's this guy who's blind and he uh, makes these super elaborate fireworks displays uh, and he posts them to YouTube and you can always see his kids and his neighbors in the photos or in the videos, but it's just something super compelling about thinking about someone who's never going to see the fireworks, but they're launching them off for everyone else anyways. And they all kind of have a different story to them. It's really cool. You can still hear them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's fun also to listen to the audio because almost always a home video of fireworks, and these were all ones with like 200 views or like 40 views, you know, and you can hear someone breathing or someone uh, narrating or something in the background. The grave plots were the first kind of corner of Craigslist that I really started to think about using for art or pulling images from. It was this whole idea of trying to uh, step back from finding my own references and looking at things that I'm seeing around my world and taking things straight from the internet or really like appropriating photos. But yeah, there's all these cemetery plots for sale on Craigslist and the weird thing is uh, you find out like little bits of people's lives by like why they're selling the plot. Like, for example, they're like, oh, I'm selling this double plot uh, because now I'm only going to do a single one, so someone got divorced or something. But you find that you can kind of see this weird tunnel into uh, what's going on. Yeah, oh yeah, you know that the squares are like how people show uh, what piece of grass you can buy for $2,900 or whatever okay. it is. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so that you can find different ways of marketing it. That's obviously not a picture of you, it's the person who took the photo. These are also from Craigslist. Yeah, but it's always the spooky part of like what you can see in the Craigslist picture besides what they were trying to show, which was just clearly what the item looks like that they're trying to sell, but it also indicates all these other weird little things. So it's really about like the other things bouncing around and all these different uh, pictures that you can see besides just this pool for sale, you know, the context. Cool, is there a reason you like pool so much? Well, there was the grave plot thing and that was kind of like the below ground part, so I wanted to do the above ground part to go with it. But yeah, I do like pools because it's kind of a, story about class a little bit. Uh, depending on what perspective you're looking at a pool from, it can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people.